وتبقى عن صورة الفروج Hey, Mona, Mona, Tula, did this sort of what you got with some of you, eh? You memorized this a long time ago. Long time ago. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء ذات البروج أو تكس أن أوث باي ذا هيفنز باي ذا سكايز ذات البروج بوزيسينج كونستليشنز بوزيسينج لوتس أوف جروبينجز أوف ستارز واليوم الموعود and by the day the promised day وشاهدين and by a witness ومشهود and the and a witnessed قتل أصحاب الأخدود may may be destroyed, may be cursed, the companions of the trench. The trench that had annar, it had fire, that il waqud, possessing an abundance of fuel. Is whom alayha qud when they they say the rulers and the army, they were upon it. Qud sitting around this trench. Wahum and they alama yafaluna upon that which they were doing. Bil mu'minina with the believers, they were shuhud, they were witnesses. Wama naqa mu'minhum and they did not dislike anything about them illa except and that yu'minu billahi. That they believed in Allah Al Aziz, the Mighty, the Great, Al Hamid, the Praiseworthy. Al Ladilahu, third sifa, the one that to him belongs Mulku Samawati, the dominion, the ownership of the heavens, well of the and the earth. Wallahu and Allah is ala kulli shayin upon everything. Shahid, he is a witness. You end it there. Now we have a change in the story. Allah then changes the story, meaning what? Up until ayah 9, from ayah number 4 until ayah number uh, 9 is, uh, is the story of the, the Ashab al -Ukhdur. In other words, it's a historical story. Allah would often mention, mention an, a historical story as a lesson for the current uh, believers and for us it's interesting because for us it's double lesson meaning what if you are now in the Makki time and you're with the Prophet وسلم, the lesson is from the Ashab al-Ukhdud to you but now if you're in 2022 you also know what happened in the Makki time as well so the lesson is from Ashab al-Ukhdud to what happened in the Makki time to what happened to you so almost like like they the sahaba didn't when they revealed this ayah they didn't have victory yet they were being tortured so they getting they getting this almost as like you know this is a trial you're going through but there is victory at the end we now retrospectively can see the the time of hardship and we can see the victory so if we get in 2022 and we suffer suffer hardship we have a double lesson you with me we have the historical lesson we have the prophetic lesson and it's almost like a double, a double reinforcement to us in, in our time. So there's almost like three contexts. There's the historical context, the prophetic context, and your contemporary context that you are reading the surah through. So in the second part here from verse number 10, Allah is going to move to the prophetic context. Allah then says, mm -hmm. inna ladina fatanu. Inna ladina. Verily those who fatanul mu'minina wal mu'minat. What does fatanu mean? From the word fitna. What's a fitna? What does fatanu mean? It means to test and means to try. But what type of test is easy or difficult? 
when you think of a fitna, you think of something easy or difficult? Difficult. Like it's a difficult throw. Um, and the word fatanu actually comes from the from the process of extracting uh, extracting like metal, extracting gold from ore. The same verb is used for fatanu is used for that as well. What's a party and people normally extract gold from something? But you dig a hole and you see a bar of gold there. How does it work? By heating. By heating it. You see a lot of rock and you see little maybe specks of there, so you have to heat that thing. Little heat, a lot of heat. A lot of heat. You have to put a lot of heat to what's going to happen and then you're going to separate the gold from the, the rock and the dust. That process is fatano. That process is, is fatano. In other words, it's a process where you have to apply a lot of energy, a lot of like heat to it. So the same with the with the believers. What they are going through is something which is a is a great trial for them. It's like it's almost like fire underneath them. Because they are being they're being oppressed. So remember we're speaking about the Makibiri. And the Makibiri who was generally oppressed. But not all the Muslims, which Muslims specifically? Many of the Muslims were were slaves of owners. Like Bilal radiallahu anhu was a slave. His mother also was a slave as well. So in that time there, there's no like police. There's no like police, the Makkah police that you go to. How does it work? It's a tribal system. You with me? The tribal powers balance each other. So if you are a, an owner of a slave and you want to beat your slave up, another tribe or another family can't come in like Rescue that slave. You ask me because now you're almost interfering in someone else's property. This is how it used to work. And therefore the Muslims, in that sense, and also Allah didn't command them to respond to also. Allah's command was to have sabr. However, if you were the leader of another tribe, or you were a prominent person, then no one would attack you then. Why? Because there'd be retaliation from that tribe, or from that family, that sub-tribe. So it's basically a system of like tribal power. If you are high in the ladder of the tribal power, if you become Muslim, like Abu Bakr, there's no real record of him being physically assaulted. Let me not say there's no record. I can't recall at this moment him being physically assaulted. But you, you have many records of, of uh, the family of Yasir, of Sumaya, of Khabab, of Bilal. They are physically assaulted in, in terrible ways. And Abu Bakr, I know he's someone who is senior and he's someone who's wealthy and he comes and actually, what you can do is you can buy the slave. You can say, listen, yeah, like, I can't stop you from doing this, but give me the slave. I will buy this person from you and, and by that I can save the person. So in the Makkan society, that was generally the people who were the, who were the slave or those who had no like, protection, no significant protection. And therefore, even the Prophet, وسلم, he wasn't touched uh, greatly. Um, it was, I mean, he was in some incidents, but generally it was when his uncle passed away, Abu Talib, because now he didn't have protection anymore. And then he was physically exposed. That's why he goes to Ta'if and he comes back and, and so on. So, so this fitna that they, that they had was at, at different levels for uh, uh, different people. So the fatanu is that heat that's applied to them, that fitna that's applied to them. So Allah says, verily those that fatanu, they the mushrikun, that tried and tested and tortured and abused. Who they torture and abuse? al mu'minina wal mu'minat. So here we can see the ism is used in both cases. In both cases. And Allah wants to emphasize here the fact that generally when you find both genders being used in the Quran is generally going to be in the Makis, in the Madini Surah. Generally going to be in the Makis Surah. Generally in the Madini Surah, Allah uses both genders separately. But yeah, in this case, it's happening in a Makis Surah. So there's a few things about Mu'min and Mu'minat. The first thing Allah doesn't use, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ فَتَنُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَأَمِنُوا أم آمنوا. Why? Because الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا are those who do an action. Al-Mu'minin is those who have the title of Mu'min and it's like their permanent status. Why? Because when pressure is applied to you, that's almost when you prove your true worth. 
Because some of the people, what happened was that they became Muslim and pressure was applied to them. And what happened to them? They went back to shirk. One of them is actually the brother of Khalid ibn Walid. He was a Muslim and then the pressure was applied to him and he, he returned back to shirk. He returned to shirk. So in other words, you can only survive the fatan, the heat that warms up this ore, the heat of this torture, if you are, have the title of mu'min. Title of mu'min. And Allah wants to emphasize here that this abuse and this torture wasn't only for the males, because normally you think about violence, you think about violence towards males, because males are like, it's called, they're like the warriors or the soldiers or the defenders. You with me? So you think about it of like, you know, they must have targeted the strong males. Now Allah says, no, they targeted the al-mu'mineen, one, mu'minat. So for two reasons, to emphasize, number one, that the females were also part of those tortured, but also as an insult to the people who are doing the, 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 the abuse. Not only did you abuse the, the males, you even went as far to abuse the, the females. So this is going to be the mention of the males and the, and the females. For us, it's very abstract, these things. Uh, but if you, if you, if you, uh, if you really put yourself in those shoes, it's actually a very difficult thing to, to think about. And it's a very difficult thing. It must have been, I mean, I just imagine how it must have been for the other believers to witness this happening. You know, you witness, uh, you witness what's happening to Bilal, you witness what's happening to Sumaya Ali Ali Yasir. You witness them being killed. It must be extremely difficult and traumatic for the, for the Muslims to, to witness this. And then also a like constant fear that they also, also lived. So, so, and it's like also interesting here because it's such a terrible thing to do, but Allah will still in the next part of the verse open the Bible of Tawbah. Thumma lam yatubu. It's almost like the Rahman doesn't go away. Even though you're the worst of the worst. You have a prophet, you're opposing the prophet. You're opposing his followers, you're physically abusing them in like a various number of ways. Allah still says, <laughs> What door didn't close? Thumma lam yatubu. Verily, those who have tortured and abused and tried the believers and male and female, thumma, and then lam yatubu, and thumma means. Uh, then immediately or after a while? Thumma means after a while. Fa. Fa means immediately. So Allah is not even saying like after you abuse the person and torture the person, then immediately must make tawbah. Allah is saying even a few years later. Meaning what? If you kill the believer, if you torture the believer, and 10, 15, 20 years later you make tawbah, Allah accept it over. Definitely. And that's eventually happening in fact for Makkah. In fact, for Makkah, not all of them, many of them died, but for many of these people, they were just given amnesty. And they made tawbah and they entered Islam, and that was it. There was no accountability of this. No. Inna lalina fatanu mu'minina wa mu'mina. Thumma, then after a while, even, lam yatubu, they don't make tawbah. Meaning Allah is still opening the door of hope to them, even the time of revelation. What's going to happen to them? Fa na hum. Fa? Then. That fa means then what? The fa is there for one of two reasons. The fa is there because of the lamia tubu, first of all. Because in the narina fatanum minal mu'minat, you don't get punishment. Or let me just say, the door of Tawbah is never closed for you. The door of Tawbah, the door of Tawbah is never closed. Punishment is only given when Tawbah isn't taken. Meaning what, you can have a terrible life your whole life and the few moments before your death you make Tawbah, then you can still save yourself. So that Fa is in Fa, then for those who have done the, the test and haven't given, and haven't made Tawbah for them. The Fa is linked to those who haven't made, who have done that and haven't made Tawbah. The second thing is that the fa is therefore, um, there's like a causative relationship. Meaning what? The punishment is coming due to those deeds. 
Whereas you find in the next verse, when the believers is there's Ufa. I mentioned the fact now because when it comes to believers, it's only Lahum. If you memorize the surah, it gets confusing sometimes. You don't know where to put the fire when you must put the fire. From many point of view, is that the reason people enter into Jahannam is because of their deeds. The reason people enter Jannah is not because of their deeds. Because of the Rahmah of Allah. It's not, it's not causative. You know what I mean? People enter Jahannam because of their deeds. They earn Jahannam. But you can't earn Jannah. So there isn't a fire. You know with me? <coughs> Sorry. Inna al ladhina fatna mu'minna wa mu'minat. No. Yeah, so 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 you, you you can you can say both of those, but not you, you can say the first thing, but not the second. Meaning what? Like you, you can carry a bank account. Yes, Allah speaks about that which you send forward to the Alqiyam. So definitely your good deeds is something which you accumulate and you send forward and it's multiplied. But our understanding is no matter how much that balance is, it is never enough to attain Jan. So yes, you can do your, I'm sending forward, I'm banking my good deeds. Definitely you can do that. But no matter how great your deeds is, it's not going to be enough to enter into paradise. Even the Prophet ﷺ himself, he says, even I cannot enter Jannah through my actions. So no matter how much you have, you're not going to exceed the Prophet ﷺ. The only way you enter is through the, the Rahmah of Allah. The Rahmah. So we don't like... Uh, um, let me just pause for a moment on this. Is that there are different uh, spiritual personalities, even in this class. For some of you, you, if Allah speaks about numerical rewards, it's a great motivator for you. And for others, it's not actually a great motivator. For some of you, if I say, if you're going to give this now, Allah's going to give you 700 times that value. For you, that's like a, like for some people, it's like a very big thing. And for other people, they don't really relate to it. And other people, I'm going to say, if you do this, Allah, you get the pleasure of Allah. For some people, that will be a big motivator. For others, they won't really be a motivator. They don't know what that means. And if others say, no, you're going to get paradise and gardens and all of those things, for some is a great motivator, for some not a great motivator. Meaning what? In the spiritual personalities, Allah has afforded different types of rewards. Some of them are going to be like numerical rewards, like you, you know, you're banking something, you get a return. Some is not to do with numerous, it's to do with, I want the pleasure of Allah. I want the love of Allah. You want the emotion, basically. You want the, Allah's approval. It's like an emotional reward. So there's like a numerical reward, and someone says like an emotional approval, acceptance reward. And some want, I want my palace and my rivers and my maidens or whatever else you want, because that is the motivation. And it's not, nothing is wrong with it because they're all mentioned in the Quran. Allah mentions numerical rewards in the Quran. Allah mentions his pleasure in the Quran. Allah mentions tangible, physical things of paradise in the, in the Quran. You can sit on couches, you can have jewelry, you get to have all of these drinks and food served to you. And you'll find that your heart might incline to one more than the other. And it's, not, it's, it's fine. And, and those of you who don't incline to some, it's fine as well. Uh, the, the main part is that you're motivated by one of them. <laughs> and some people are motivated out of fear. Like what dominates is not the reward of Jannah, it's more the, the fear of hellfire. For some people, like the fear of hellfire is the main motivation. So there are diverse motivations in the Quran, and we should, we should basically accept them all because they're all presented, presented in the Quran and not look down on someone else who does something in a certain way. Like, yeah, you just want the gardens of paradise. Or you're just doing it for the numbers. What about the pleasure of Allah Ta'ala? People are different. People are different. You must accept the differences amongst, amongst people. The main thing is that the people must become the slaves of Allah Ta'ala in whichever way it motivates them. No. Those who try and test the believers male, one mu'minati, and the believers female, Thumma, then even after a while, lam yatubu tab yatubu means to turn back, to turn to Allah. Then they don't turn in repentance to Allah. Fa, then as a causative for them doing the tra doing the, the fitna and not making tawbah, the resultant of that is in the fa, lahum adabu jahannam, the lahum is the khabr, 
and the adab is the mubtara for them for exclusivity taqsis la hum la is therefore emphasis definitely certainly undoubtedly fa due to la definitely whom for them and them alone is what adabu jahannam is the punishment of jahannam wa and la hum again the khabar is brought forward and for them and them exclusively is going to be adabul hariq what does hariq mean it's a very fine but also hariq means when you like to fight which means it's interesting allah mentioned that why we should allah mentioned before this ashab al ukhdud about the group of people who litify and throw people inside of it allah is saying those people who do things like that in the maktaba the fire will be lit upon them the fire will burn upon upon them so some ulama say that the harik is there as a as a synonym for jahannam but the harik is there because jahannam is let's call jahannam is not uh, jahannam linguistically doesn't mean fire you think that harik means fire so harik means burning they will have the, the the recompense of the burning so it's therefore extra emphasis some ulama say no we can separate between jahannam and harik Meaning what? You don't only get harit in the in Jahannam. Where else do you get harit? In the qabr. You make dua for the person. Allahumma jal qabrahum raudhum riyadh jannah. Make his call is 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 qabr a garden for the gardens of paradise. Wala tajal qabrahu khufratan min khufri niran. And don't make his is 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 grave a ditch for the ditch of the of the fires. Some of them say that al-hari can also include the the qabr. That they will get adabu jahannam in the end, but before they get adabu jahannam in the end, they can get adabu hari in the in the in the qabr as well. No. Falahum adabu jahannam, walahum adabu hari. Then Allah says, "Inna al-ladina." Verily, those that amanu. Those who who have believed and who have professed iman. So yeah, Allah doesn't say inna ladi inna inna al mu'minina. It's almost like Allah lowers the bar a little bit. <laughs> like when you try, the bar must be high. But for Jannah, Allah lowers the bar. You must be a person of basic iman. Inna ladina amanu. Verily, those who so you can see the difference between using a fi'l and using an ism. Because amana is on what the فأف على أمنا تو أمزاس، because أمنا you put another letter أمنا، so the effort becomes أمنا، and the and the and the مضاري is now we put the أمزاس back يؤمنو، but other كيرو هذا لسه يؤمنو ولا ليس يؤمنو you took the Hamza away with the Amana, you took the Hamza with the Mudari also. Amana, you minu. In the, they say you minu. Some people are you're, you're reading you minu. Instead of you minu. The point is that it's going to be the, the fourth bab. What's the quality of the fourth bab? Causation. What does am, is it Amina on the first bab mean? What does Amina on the first bab mean? Amina on the first bab means? What to protect, but less to be safe. To be safe. Amina means to be safe. So amana on the fourth means what? To cause to be safe. So people who have professed iman have caused themselves to be safe, which is a very appropriate because they're gonna, they're gonna save themselves from save themselves from what? Adabu Jahannam or Adabul Harit. Inna Ladina verily those that. And again, the inna year. The inna ya in both cases ya of what you call izah to shak. Why? Because for the removal of doubt. Because you're speaking to a society that doubts your narrative. The people who are doing the oppression, like all warfare, will justify it. And say so these people have come to split our families, these people have come to uh, upend the faith of our forefathers. They are the evil ones and therefore we have to oppose them. Allah is here to rectify who is right and who is wrong, what is good and what is what is evil. 
in Aladdin. And therefore, there's lots of innas in the Quran is to clear the narrative. And I think it's very profound. Why? Because in our case, uh, in, in, in our time, right and wrong is not so clear anymore. Because everything is just whatever you want. Go with the flow. Bolo. Not bolo. Let's be on the lookout. YOLO. <laughs> you only love ones. That's too much of my neighbor chat. There's no bolo, bolo. Uh, <laughs> so, so the whole narrative is what about? The narrative of relativity. Meaning what? Truth is relative to the individual. When truth is relative to the individual and you have a thousand different individuals, you have a thousand different truths. So the narrative above that is what? There is no objective truth. If there is no objective truth, where are you coming with truth and falsehood, right and wrong? Right according to who? Wrong according to who? The Muslim has a simple answer, Allah. Simple as that, Allah. Amina. Yeah, so salima means to be sound and to be like, uh, to be whole and intact. Which amina means more the, the, the idea of safety. Like safety from harm. Where salima means when something is, is whole. Like jammu dakar salim. You keep the word and you, you, you add something, you keep the word whole. No, so amina is more the idea of safety from harm and hurt and so on. What I mentioned, I mentioned the inna, why? Because the inna is important in our time. Is that there is no confusion about things. Like as believers, no matter how many individuals, personalities, thoughts, beliefs, creeds we have, we are always going to believe Allah is one. We're going to believe he's the Lord, he's the creator. We are always going to believe messengers. No matter how much gurus you have saying this, that, all of those things. You know, guru, muhu, you don't worry. What's going to happen here? Whoever's going to come saying, we don't worry about it. However many ideologies thoughts are going to come, we're going to say the Quran is like that. Because we have a fixed point of reference. And we believe that this point of reference has been fixed since the beginning of time. It's only now that people want to make humans into gods. They're making humans into gods. In other words, the human can now decide on truth and falsehood. The human can make their own sharia for everybody. I want to eat like this, get married like this, trade like this, do like this, dress like this, because the human now is the God. And not just the human. What in the human? Is hawa. No. Have you seen the one that says takes his God? Is that Nasus or Hawa? Which Allah does this go? Araita? No, have you seen the one that takes as his ilah is hawa? It's not even the, it's not even like the thinking human. It's actually really actually the the nafsi human. The nafsi human has become the replacement of God. That's what the modern culture is like. In summary, that ayah is it. The nafs of every human has become the God, and that will be celebrated, and there will be no value judgment attached to it. And we see it most uh, pronounced within, within gender and sexual orientation. Because it's pure nafs. And within eating and drink as well. It's like pure, pure nafs. And that is replaced with God. And therefore Allah says the inna, the inna is important. Why? Because it's categorized people and actions into clear categories of good and evil and truth and falsehood. Inna ladina amanu. Greater is those who have professed faith. faith. In the past, at some stage, they have become people of Iman, they have come, become people of Shahada. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And they have amilu. Amilu means to intentionally do an action. They have intentionally done a salihat, a, a set of righteous, good actions. There's no fah there, there's just lahum. Because they're not a, it's not a direct link, it's like an indirect link. It's still lahum, definitely for him, for them and them alone. There's exclusivity. They will have jannatun, they will have gardens due to the rahmah of Allah Ta'ala, tajri, flowing, running, min tahtiha, from beneath these gardens will be al-anhar, will be rivers. In the nature of human beings, human beings like water close to them. If a property is close to water, expensive. 
the riverfront property, beachfront property, lakefront property, everything close to the water is uh, expensive and desired. It's, it's the human nature to love bodies of water close to them. If you take a hike, what's the most beautiful thing? Oh, you come to the rock pool, you come to the river, you come to the waterfall. We all like naturally gave us love for, uh, for bodies of water. No. So you have your own one, inshallah. In paradise, not on one, ones. Al anhar plural. ذلك الفوز الكبير. ذلك that to have iman and amal salihat and to end up in paradise. ذلك is al fawz. What's fawz? Success. Al kabir. The great success. This is a value statement. This is a value statement. Allah is saying that is of great value. That is the definition of great success. Because remember in the Mushrik society, what are they saying as success? Power and authority and might that they're oppressing the truth. That for them is success. Are they saying your success is the opposite of success? No. So interesting, uh, like a meme, they were saying that if you had a, like a group of monkeys, and then you had one monkey that used to take all the bananas and keep them away from the other monkeys while they're starving. People would study what's wrong with this monkey. But when it comes to people, you put that man, that monk, that man monkey who, who keeps everything, you put him on the Fortune 500, <laughs> put him on Forbes magazine. <laughs> this abnormality of people hoarding, hoarding wealth and hoarding accumulation while your neighbor star, stars is celebrated as success. Why? Because the nafs is the God. The nafs is the God. And the whole society has now celebrated as, as success. Like it's like a, it's like a, it's like a crazy thing. No. Why did I mention that now? Because the alikal falls in Kabir. No, because you, 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 you really have to, you have to question value judgments all the time because people are pushing value judgments to you all the time. And it's like pushed you all the time in every single way, even the way you dress, in the way you look, in the car you drive, in the way you speak, and what you do on the weekend, and the way you go eat. It's just value, judgment, value, 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 value. And people are trying to sell you a set of values all the time. And Allah is telling you, no, this is the value judgment I want you to, to have. And, it's, and that is like the biggest battle for people to overcome. But when you make that shift, it's... A, extremely liberating because that set of imposed value judgments is actually a prison for you it's a prison that you can't come out of because trust me you will never look beautiful enough because you can't compete with the fake airbrush photoshop models on instagram even they can't compete with themselves <laughs> they don't even look like that <laughs> so like you know what i mean you can't compete against the wealthy because we don't even want the competition it's, like it's the wrong value judgment all the time. And Allah is saying, fawzul kabir, to have iman and to have amal salihat and to endure hardships when people try you and to, and to attain the rahmah of Allah Ta'ala, that is the greatest success. And it may sound cliche, but it's the most important thing in your life is to remember that. Lest we become a society of nafsi people, of material value. Lest we think that your career and your degree and your salary and your position at work is the most important thing. Or your color of your skin is the most important thing. Or your physical look is the most important thing. Or the house is the most important thing. It's meaningless. Your taqwa is the most important thing. Raise your children like this, inshallah. You have to raise your children with the right set of value judgments. Don't tell them something, you love something else. You have to live it and you have to raise them to live it as well. And I think largely in Cape Town, if I think of the previous generation, is that I feel the previous generation um, had a good value system. I mean, now that they were poor also. I mean, that sounds strange. <laughs> but the fact that they were poor and oppressed also helped people's iman. Because like you, you're struggling and you're under fitna. You will like have apartheid over you. You have no economic opportunities. You have to like 
eke out a living out of like difficult situations, you're living in difficult situations, and therefore like it 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 helps you to cling to your faith because that's like your 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 your, your hold. And with the Muslims, the 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 the, the most powerful way to weaken their faith faith is to give them dunya. It's not to oppress, it's to give them dunya. And now, like our generation, we've got like too much. There's a moving hadith, you know, like a hadith like brings you tears. You know, when when uh, some Sahaba of Qazam died, when they when they served them food, they cried. Because Sahaba became relative, relatively wealthy. It's not like wealthy, like we think in our mind. They're relatively wealthy, like they can have a nice meal with meat. In. And they cried and they cried because when we were the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we didn't eat like this. Aisha used to cry, Radil Anna used to cry when she used to eat. Why? Because she had all of this like meat, vegetables, bricks. Like, you know, when I was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we didn't eat like this. So how we used to cry? And they used to say that that time was better than this time. And I mean, it wasn't even like in our mind excess. In our mind, there's a normal meal that they would, they would be in tears for that. So uh, value judgments for your children, especially if you get more affluent, is the most important thing. And even if you're not affluent, a poor person can still be materialistic. Because their heart is attached, it still has the wrong value judgment. You need, we need to like, oppose it on every level. Don't buy your child the most expensive phone or PlayStation or Techies or anything. You have to train the nafs from young. You have to train the next song from here. Now you can force me, Kabir. Now. And we've trained our own nafs also. And so every Ramadan, Ramadan is in training your nafs. Come rich. 11 months, you give a car. I'll come right here a month now. I will take some of the things you value out of your life and fix your life for you. That's what Ramadan is. It's about like life is too short. And I think COVID was a good thing because COVID did make people realize. I think pre-COVID that we were very, we took things for granted. We took the length of life for granted because now suddenly we had people just passing away and we also took our economic situations for, for granted because job stability and career development was much more stable pre-COVID. COVID happened and just upended people's lives in a very difficult way, not in an easy way, in a difficult way which people are still suffering and struggling. But sometimes there is, there is even though there's physical struggle and difficulty, the spiritual goodness and struggle. So if you're in a family who is struggling now because you lost people who are close to you, because you're struggling with your economics, also know that that is the fitna way where the gold is separated from the all. There's a benefit in that as well. There's a spiritual benefit in, in, in trials. So the Prophet says, Allah If Allah loves the people, Allah tests them. The, 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 the hadith says, in the أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ إِبْتِلَاءً أَنْبِيَاءَ اللَّهِ أَوْكَمَا قَالَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ That the most tested of people are the Anbiya. Like a test in Islam is always like dual-natured. It's hard and tough, but it's also abundant blessings in the, in the test. And this is, a, this is a surah of being tested. I hope to finish the surah today. But that inna they threw me off there. <laughs> because I don't want that's the purpose of the inner. The purpose of the inner is to remove doubt. That is the exact that is the precise purpose of the inner. That's like the you know, because in text you can't hear voice. You can't hear voice. The voice is represented by huruf and harakat. And so the purpose of the inner is precise, precisely that. And the end of the inner is what? Dhalik al fawzul kabir is another emphasis there. Like from a textual point of view, this is like super emphasized. Lahum, This is like a very emphasized ayah in how in Allah is sorting out our, our value judgment. Allah make us from the true believers. Allah help us against our own nafs. And this Ramadan must, inshallah, this is the Ramadan we're going to buckle down, inshallah, and, and work on ourselves. Allahu, Amin. Inshallah, in the next. Listen, we will uh, try to finish. Barakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Also, just a note for, for next week, inshallah. Next week, we'll start 10 minutes earlier at 20 past 8, and we'll end at 20 past 11 for the nikah here next week. So, we'll start at 20 past 8. I'll make a niya to come on time, inshallah.
You also make a niyam, all of you also? No. Collective niyam we make. And then uh, we end at 20 past 11 next week, inshallah. 20 past, of course, as soon as the car starts, we will stop the lesson, inshallah. Barakallah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What's this? Now, so the question about the la, the la itself is there for emphasis. The la means for, yes. But the, no, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, you're right. Sorry, I made a mistake. The la is not emphasis. The la is just for four. So just uh, reverse it, inshallah. It's not la mutokid. It's a harful jar. I'm sorry. Why did I say the last for emphasis? I'm going to stop me. No, that all the last, sorry, I made a mistake with the la. Just for those who are listening, still that lies of the emphasis, no, that lies of the You know, tomorrow we will try to finish it. Sheikh, could I just ask a question? Is there a difference between Shahid and Shahid? Shahid and Shahid. The difference is that the Shahid uh, is the normal form, and Shahid is the Mubalagha intensive form, the Fa'il form. So a Shahid. Uh, in terms of intensity, shahid is normal and shahid is most intense. And therefore, in terms of meaning, a shahid is a witness, but a shahid is a martyr because by dying, the martyr is basically an intense witness to the truth of Allah. So a shahid is a witness and a shahid is going to be a, what we also use shahid is martyr because of the intensification in the, in the witness. But shaheed in terms of Allah, it means eh, on the mubalagha, the exaggerated, uh, the strongest form, basically, of shaheed. I hope that helps, inshallah. Thank you. Barakallah.